Welcome to our store. Um, have a seat. Now, um, we spoke on the phone a little while ago, and you said that you were interested in purchasing an antique camera so that you could take film photography. Is that right? Good. Okay. Well, based on what we talked about, um, I think I have found the perfect camera for you. Um, and what we'll do is go over it, um, all the different features, and then you can decide if it's the camera for you, okay? Good, okay. Well, let's get started then. Um, we had this come in, and just a little while ago, and it's been sitting on a shelf waiting for the right buyer. So I think um, you're really going to like this camera. It's been kept in good condition. Um, this was a photographer's camera, but they treated it very well. Um, so it is, um, a lot of good pictures have been taken with this camera, I'm sure. So first thing you'll notice is it has been protected in a leather case. Um, which fits the camera snugly. And that's one of the reasons this camera is in such good condition. So, the case attaches here to the back of the camera with two snaps. We can take those off now. Just like that. And then there is another um, catch here at the bottom. And the camera comes right out like that. And the catch attaches here to this other leather part that is um, on the back of the camera. Notice the inside of the case has a velvet lining to it. It's very soft. It's kind of a purple color. And that also makes sure that the camera stays in really good condition. And um, I can tell that pretty much when this camera wasn't being used, it was kept in this case. This is the camera. It's a Nikon F series. And um, the first thing we'll talk about is the um, other half of the case, which is also leather. And it attaches down here at the bottom and fits snugly and provides a strap holding the camera. And there's another D-ring over here on this side if you wanted to attach a shoulder strap. So we'll remove this so we can get to the rest of the camera. Now here's just the camera. It comes with just this one lens and um, a light metering viewfinder. So you will be able to look through this and see what's coming through the lens as well as being able to meter the light as well. Because when you're looking for a camera this old, all the light metering has to be done by hand. Um, and we do offer classes on how to do that, um, how to work with some of these older cameras, um, where pretty much everything is manual. Um, 
and that'll help you become more familiar with it, but we can get into that later. Um, for now, we have this one lens. We have the focusing ring here. And then we have the f-stop ring here. What I like about these whole cameras is um, they're like 99% mechanical. So everything that you move on this camera comes with just a really nice solid click as the gears and everything else engage. And um, there's no like um, motors in here, as in modern cameras that focus everything automatically. So that's the other thing. This is a manual focus camera. Um, there is no autofocus. Everything has to be done with this ring right here. So and I, I sometimes prefer that when I'm focusing, working with my camera, sometimes I think I'm fighting the autofocus more than anything. So. There's definitely something to be said with complete control over the process. So here's the lens. Um, it does need to be cleaned up a little bit, um, but nothing. There's just a little bit of dust and stuff on it. Nothing that uh, is too major. Go over some of the features here at the top of the camera. This is your light metering, um, one of the basic indications of your light metering. Um, when you look through this viewfinder, you'll see a much more specific light metering. But this is basically kind of like is the light metering working? Is it on? Um, and kind of just a basic range of what you're looking at. Um, so that you can just kind of tell whether you're, you have enough light or, at all or not. And this turns on the light metering, and this turns it off. So that way you're not wasting the batteries. It's the one thing in this um, camera that has batteries. Um, but you'll need to purchase some because the batteries that came with it were really old. But um, you will have to make sure you put batteries in there so that the light mirroring works. This here dial is for the shutter speed. I don't know if you can see that or not. You have this little white dot right there. And you turn this set the shutter speed. So that's 125, 250, 5 hundredths of a second, and a thousandth of a second. And that's 60. You'll notice that the 60 is in red. Um, that is because um, that is the shutter speed you want to use if you're using a flash. And pretty much that's Pretty much the slowest speed you can get away with a handheld shot and still look good. Then we have 30, 15, 8, 4, 2, time, 1, which is one, um, 1 minute, and then bulb. These are the very long exposure settings that you would use if you were doing like a night shot or something like that. For the most part, 
you're going to be up here around these numbers. Okay? And I also see here we have the indication of how many shots have been taken on a roll. And this is again a mechanical process. Um, when you open up the back and put in a new roll of film, this will start here um, before zero. Because with film, when you pull it out to put it in the camera, you're actually exposing some of that film. So you'll need to um, wind up some of that exposed film and then get to zero. And that'll help you move all that old exposed film out of the way so you can get to fresh film that's been inside the canister. So that's why that is set before zero. And this is just a little indication you can turn it back and forth so you can remember how many shots are on your roll of film. Um, it basically goes from 20 to 36. Um, usually rolls of film now um, can have many more shots on them than that. Sometimes like instead of 36 you'll have 45. Um, so this is a little out of date as far as the numbers that are used in exposure on a film. So, and then once you take a picture, this is your shutter release. You push that and the mechanics kick in and it takes a picture based on your settings of the shutter speed and the f-stop. And once that's done, you'll need to advance the film so you can have fresh film behind the lens. To do that, you pull this. And you're ready to take another shot. as we've done that, this now reads zero. So if we actually had film in here, we would now be ready to take our first shot. So you usually want to take it two or three and move that old film out of the way. Okay. Now on this side of the camera, we have the take-up spool. So when you are done, and you've taken up all the shots on the roll, and this doesn't advance anymore, you've pulled all the film to this side, you want to make sure that you roll all that film back up inside the canister. If you don't, and you open up the back, you expose the entire roll of film to light, and you lose everything that you've shot. And yes, I've done that before. <laughs> is not a very good feeling. So what you need to do in that case is come down here at the bottom uh, this one doesn't actually have it. That was on a different style of camera, I apologize. With this one, all you need to do is rewind. You don't have to push a button to do it. This folds up. It's a wonderful mechanical camera. And you have an arrow here that indicates the direction you need to turn. And you would wind all of your film back up inside the canister so that light will not get to it. And it will be ready to process. And that's what that is for. Now, this is the viewfinder. You look through this and see the picture. You can see my uh, fingers here. So you're actually looking at the light.
light coming directly through the lens. There is a mirror inside of this camera. And the light is bouncing off that mirror. Here, down, and off another mirror. So the light comes in, bounces up, and comes out. Where you view it here. Okay, so that covers a lot of the basics of the camera. Um, now I'm going to focus on how to uh, change out the lenses of the camera. Um, so to do that, you want to hold this button down here. And then rotate the lens this. Then the lens will disengage. You'll notice there's a little catch up here. It engages this part of the lens right here. So you want to make sure you just um, Rotate it off slowly until this um, disengages and you can take the lens off. See in there, there is a mirror. That is one of two mirrors that bounce the light up so you can see it. When you press the shutter, this mirror folds out of the way and the film is behind it. And so the light hits the film instead of being bounced up. And so when you hear the clicking of the shutter, it is that mirror being raised and the light coming through. Did you see that? Look very carefully at that square in the middle of the lens. It's just a split second. And that mirror gets out of the way long enough to expose the film, and then comes right back down. So, to put the lens back on, you want to make sure that this part is over here, just ready. And then when you rotate it on, We'll hear it click and engage. And now the changes you have will be translated up through that little mechanical coupling there. Okay. The next important thing to know about is actually putting film in the camera. So for that you will come down here to the bottom, and you'll see this little device here. Fold that out, and you want to rotate it. 180 degrees, and this whole bottom just slides off. see the inside of the camera. This is the side where you put the canister in. You'll see there's a big hole here where it will slip right in and engage right with these teeth here. And you will stretch the film across and you will put it here in this slot on this cylinder making sure that you engage these teeth here. The film will have holes in it on the top and the bottom. Those holes will line up with these sprockets. Then you will fold it inside of this notch so that when this rotates, see? 
will pull the film around the spool. And here you'll notice the actual shutter. And you'll notice when I click the shutter button, watch this and see it move. Just a split second. It raises and lets the light in and then closes. And then you will advance the film. And that is pretty much how you load the film and then expose it. Um, it's very important that you make sure that light doesn't get to the film. slide right back on. You rotate that in and it's sealed in and no light can get into your film. This is where you would mount it on a tripod. This is pretty much the same with cameras nowadays. Um, exact same thread and everything so you don't have to worry about that. If you have a tripod for a newer camera it'll still work on this old one. So now, the last thing you need to know about is this part of the camera right here. This whole viewfinder part is actually removable. To do that, you need to work with this little lever here in the front. And this little button here in the back. You push this button and hold it down, and that will release the back part of the viewfinder. And then squeeze this lever here, and that will release the front side of the viewfinder. Now, the reason for this is there are several different viewfinders that you could put on top of this camera. This viewfinder was for light metering. And here is that mirror that I was talking about. It was bouncing light into the lens. So you can see my fingers down here. So there's a lens at the top, and there's a lens here on the side. I mean a mirror. There's a mirror at the top and a mirror on the side. That bounce the light around. This is where you will put in the batteries for the light meter. You will unscrew this and put in two small hearing aid batteries to go in there. Okay. And then here at the top we have the lens for focusing so you can see the image. It's a separate lens that works with a viewfinder. If we take off the lens cap, you can see my fingers underneath showing up here. See? So. That way, if you ever need to clean this or something like that, or replace the batteries, this comes off. Or if you find another type of viewfinder that you would like to use, you can put it here as well. So to put it back on, you want to make sure that you hold down this lever and keep it held down. And just slide it back on. And then release. There you go. So that pretty much covers the basics of the camera. Is this um, 
something like what you were looking for. Okay, okay. I thought you'd like it. Um, it is a very good, solid camera. Um, it is all mechanical. Um, as long as it's maintained and cleaned, it will just keep going. Um, so this is what you'd like. Okay. Very good. Very good. I'm glad you're happy with it. Let me, um, back here together in the case for me. Okay, there we go. And you'll see here this catch. There's a little button here, it goes right in there. And it all snaps up. I would recommend keeping it in this case when you're not using it. Um, even though it's a sturdy camera, it is um, an old camera. So the, uh, the more you can take care of it, the better. In this case, we'll definitely do the job. Okay? Well, I'm very glad you like it. Um, I hope you take some awesome pictures with it. So, um, come back if you have any problems, or if you need it cleaned or serviced, and, or if you need any lessons on it. Okay?